Thank you for tuning in to the human training your dog is begging you for. And if you're needing help understanding your dog and their behaviors, you've come to the right place. Uh, I'm Charles Countryman, co-founder of Canine Culture Dog Training in Dallas, Texas. And with me today is senior trainer and head of evaluations, as always, Wyatt. Good morning. Good morning. So today, Wyatt, we're going to be chatting about banned breeds and the misconceptions. So if you have one of those dogs that are banned or you're just wondering why are dogs banned, should they be banned, uh, you've come to the right spot base today. Uh, our goal with all of our podcasts is to help you with training behavioral or emotional issues that you may have with your dog to help you have a better relationship with your dog. And would you say that any of that has to do with breed? With breed? Yes. Okay. Um, I, what I say is every, most stereotypes have a kernel of truth in them. Like, I like that. Kernel uh, of truth. Like pit bulls. I own two of them. I have kids. They are the awesome dogs, but I have seen some very aggressive pit They were dog fighting dogs for a minute. For a minute. Uh, but it... Yeah, we'll, we'll talk into why that is. Uh, their nickname is also uh, Nanny Dog. Yep. To take care of too. children. So if they are meant to take care of children, how aggressive can they be? Well, they can be. 100%. So we're going to go ahead and talk about pits for Staffordshire Terrier or any of the... The bullies. That Terrier, Staffordshire mixed breed. Uh, we typically just call them pit bulls, but there's a couple segments in that breed. Um, I think that's probably the best one to start with because it's the one that everyone thinks is evil dog, um, killer dog. They have the hardest time in our band and some places um so the, I, I think the biggest issue is the misconception of the dog but not understanding the breed not understanding what is dna driven into that dog so you said they're used in fighting of unfortunately some people still fight dogs um and that's a human issue that's not a dog issue those dogs didn't say hey could uh, you get me into a fighting sport? No, those were humans that did that to the dog. Um, and every now and then, uh, another misconception with the kernel of truth uh, that deals with dog fighting is we'll get a dog, uh, pit bull, or it could be a bulldog. It could be typically it's going to be a dog with an entire with an insane threshold for pain. That's why it's typically going to be a pity or a bulldog because both of them have insanely high tolerance or for like pain. Like a Doggo Argentino. Yeah, Doggo Argentino is another great example. So there's a few breeds that just unbelievable tolerance for pain. That is one of the reasons pit bulls are used in fighting, one of the reasons. But uh, we'll, we'll occasionally get a, an aggressive dog and the person will say, ah, this dog was a bait dog. This dog was a bait dog. That's BS. Um, that dog was abused. That dog was not a bait dog. And the misconception is if you're thinking about it, if you're a professional dog fighter and those people are scum, uh, but if you were trying to train your athlete to be a great fighter, let's pretend you're a boxer, Wyatt, and you're training for a fight with Mike Tyson and you want to last longer than 12 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to train with me? Or are you going to train with a fighter? Oh, with a fighter. Yeah. I mean, I'm just training you to last 13 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> you might grab one extra second out of it, but a fighter would probably teach you how to dodge a little bit better than me, and you might make it a minute. Um, you That's the same premise with fighting dogs. Uh, people that fight their dogs do not find a docile dog that will just lay there and get its butt kicked. That's not training their dog to be a fighter. That that did nothing for that dog. So bait dogs, that's a very high misconception in the fighting um, world is typically, no, the dog was just incredibly abused and people just don't know the background of the dog. Um, we we have a few pits that we've trained with just hellacious scars. Well, I think it's also 
easier for us humans to go, oh, it was from a dog fighting ring. No, it, it wasn't the aggressive one. It was the bait dog. Right, right. So I don't have he might have been a fighting dog. dog. He just wasn't very good at it. Because I think yeah. all the dog fighting rescues we've trained are some of the nicest dogs. Yeah, most of the <laughs> um, – so uh, if you've never read any uh, – there's a book on pit bulls. It's a massive book, five, 600 pages of uh, velvet. Golly, I can't remember it. Um, but it delves a lot into the history of dogfighting sport. And many of the uh, current AKCs, uh, you know, I'm not saying AKC, but there's a register of breeds. They originally started in the 1800s to register fighting dogs, not to track the pedigree of a dog per se like they do now. No, they were registers for fighting dogs. Um, so they have a storied past as well. But this book uh, was fascinating that I read. Um, if you're not super into dogs, it'd probably bore you to death. But it's the whole book is just about pit bulls. And the... Uh, process in fighting a pity is the pity has to be washed by the competitors. They each wash each other's dog. Oh, okay. And the reason is they're making sure there's no chemicals on their fur, something poisonous that could right. affect their dog. And they actually treat each other's dog with the utmost care, you know, because they just, I don't know. It's it's such a weird in this uh, yeah, freaking sport. It, it, because the people that do it some of them actually really do look at it as a sport. Um, it's atrociously terrible, but they actually, some of them actually do look at it as a sport and then realize later it's how bad it is. It's also like um, the gladiators in Rome. It, death didn't always happen. Right. It does yeah. not. Most dog fights do not end with a dog. No, they, they actually don't want it to. No, because that's they, a they very want expensive the dog. To, dog. <laughs> they want the dog to tap out. And so. The reason I mention that is because those pits that are fighting are not actually human aggressive because a total stranger is putting it in a bathtub and rubbing it down, washing it, drying it, checking it for any injuries. You know, they want to make sure it's ready to fight first. Um, at the end of the fight, um, if one dog is dominating the other dog and the owner is doing his job right, he'll throw in the towel to save his dog. They then do one more mock start, and it's for the benefit of the losing dog. What they're checking is to see, will the dog still come out with the heart of a fighter? Will he at least try to come out? If so, everybody applauds that dog. It's atrocious, but it's it's done out of respect. Um, but anyway, the reason – wow, we just totally went down a rabbit trail with this. <laughs> um, the reason we're talking, I guess, so much about pities is they're such a misunderstood breed. Um the problem is and why they're such good fighting dogs is they go so deeply into red zone that it is hard to get them out of the red zone. And you couple that with an insanely high tolerance for pain. They're literally bred to fight yeah. because of those two. Um, and, and it's it's something that – because most people just see pit bulls and the big, happy, lovable couch potatoes because yeah. most people never, ever see their pit bull go into red mode. Right. Right. And when you do it, like, uh, it, you'll find yourself actually afraid of your own dog because it's not like a lab that's going to bite you and run away. No, the pit bull, it's full on. They're pit tenacious. Bull. So yeah. that's the other aspect that makes them a, a, a good fighting dog if there's such a thing is they're also the tenacity in them. You can, you know, <laughs> bulldogs are actually great fighting dogs too. They just can't breathe good enough to yes. do it. <laughs> 100%. Um, but. Most uh, most most dogs that are dog aggressive or human aggressive, aggression typically is fear. It's usually fear based, and the easiest way to make something you're afraid of go away is bark at it. It runs away. Oh, that works. I'll just keep doing that. I'll lunge. I'll bark. I'll nip. I'll bite, and the bad stuff goes away. That's a learned behavior. So we just have to a, a really good training regimen for an aggressive dog, whether it's human or dog aggression, is teach it to not be afraid of whatever it's reacting to. You start with that. Well, the problem is it's what it's why so many we train so many German shepherds, so right. many pit bulls. Is like a black lab. You've got to try like very hard try to make it aggressive because it's just such a stable yeah. dog. But if you've got the guard dog DNA, if you're not socialized properly, you are just terrified. Yep. 
Um, and the fear will turn into aggression eventually, just like a, like a bully in high school. They're not Hitler at 15. Right, they don't right. want to kill all the other kids in the school. They're just so terrified of something insecurity in their life that that's how it's coming out. It's showing, uh, manifesting as aggression or right. just being a jerk. Um, we train an ungodly amount of fear aggression dogs here. And most of them, once they realize they're not going to die, they want to play with a lot of the right. people and dogs. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of controversy about pit bulls throughout the country. As far as I know, there's only one county in the United States that specifically bans Staffordshire Terrier breeds pit bulls. And that's Miami-Dade in Florida. Um, the... There uh, might be another small community here or there, but really all the searching I did was just based on populous states, and it was the only one, and a lot of people heard about that because it was recent. But uh, that's it. Nowhere else in Florida, and nowhere else in Florida can it ever be banned, any breed. And the reason is, after Miami-Dade County did that, the state of uh, Florida's legislature passed a law in 2018 forbidding any county municipality from ever banning a breed again because they thought it was so wrong. Well, but one thing they screwed up is they grandfathered Miami-Dade in and let them continue it. I do not know why they did that, but as far as I know, Miami-Dade County is the only municipality that actually specifically bans a breed. I think that's one good thing about the U.S. Uh, yeah. Because there's – full-on countries that ban breeds like dog argentinos are banned in a lot of countries and, and dog argentinos are basically just roided up pit bulls they yeah they're they're big massive boar hunting pit bulls massive dog yeah boar hunting yeah bred, bred to hunt boars um so i think where most people get uh screwed up with banned breeds is what's called restricted breed policies that's really what we should be talking about that that's prevalent. And that's usually if you're renting, Yep, um, that's where you're going to come face to face with this on a continuous basis with your restricted breeds. And we'll go over them. So uh band in Dallas, nowhere, there's nowhere in the city of Dallas that any dog is breed is, is banned or anywhere in Texas. Uh, again, Miami Dade's the only one that I know of that's literally specifically banned pit bulls. Um, restricted breeds really have more to do with insurance than anything else. In the yep. insurance industry, insurers are the drivers behind the banned breed policy. So if you want to do something, that's who you reach out to. It's the insurers that are driving the restricted breeds in well, the, rentals. The Again, the kernel of truth of why they're restricted is, say, a chihuahua that's aggressive. Correct. Is going to bite you once or twice, even a big chihuahua. The problem is when that pit bull, when you finally push it to bite you, is going to bite the crap out yeah, of you. Yeah, that's the amount of damage that a... Yes. I mean, you can shove your finger into a chihuahua's mouth. I have. <laughs> just a couple weeks ago and just let him have it out. And then he went, okay, I guess that's not worth it. Um, and he never bit again because uh, I called his bluff. Yeah. Would I do that with a pit bull? Not yeah. if I want my hand back. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the most common restricted breeds are the Akita. Doberman, Staffordshire Terriers, so we've already determined we're really talking about pit bulls in that. Um, American Bulldog, not the English Bulldog, but the American Bulldog. German Shepherds, Wolf Dog, Great Dane. Which is wild. Yeah, that one actually surprised me. Those are the most common restricted breeds. Um, and then Rottweiler rears its head quite often in some areas as well. Um, but... Yeah, that kind of shocked me that Great Danes are in there. Um, I think it comes back to what you just talked about. If a Great Dane becomes dangerous, well, holy scary. crap, you have Very a 200, scary. you have an animal that <laughs> weighs as much or more than you, and they could kill you. 100%. Um, yeah. Because they outweigh you. <laughs> um, so, top biting dog breeds. Um, I was researching this because there's kind of a myth that golden retrievers bite more people than dogs. Uh, here's the trouble when you Google anything, you know, Google's only, you know, any, any stats only as good as the information is put in it. Um, the one thing I have found is that besides insurance companies that are the main driver of restricted breeds, um, the second one is 
The media. The media yep. is basically the problem for virtually anything in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, right. they just, you know, they, they don't get people to read their articles by talking about good stuff. They have to yep. put one side against the other and make it interesting enough to grab somebody's attention and want to read it. So um, that's their agenda. I guess we got into a little politics today. Um, so anyway, the media. If a chihuahua bites somebody, it does not make the news. Yes. If a pit bull does, they ensure that they say pit bull mauled child. Yep. It's like uh, a Florida man headline. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. If a lab bit somebody and drew a little blood, dog bites lady on walk. That's yeah. the news headline. Pit bull bit someone and scratched them. Pit bull, pit bull attacks lady on walk in park. <laughs> you yeah. know? That's the problem. So you see it more as right. the pit bull, not just, oh, someone got bit by a dog. Right. So I'm going to go over these stats, but I actually don't quite believe them because I think there's a lot more bites in the United States than are in these stats. But if they don't require stitches, most people do not seek medical help. So there's probably a tens of thousands of dog bites that are underreported or mm -hmm. flat out not reported. It's also hard because some breeds are way more prevalent per capita than other breeds. Correct. So one are overrepresented. Stats are very hard and easy to push manipulate in you whatever yeah. position you want them to look good yeah. for. Yep. Um, all right. So Pitbull does read lead the list with top biting dog breeds, um, accounted for seven hundred and seventy two thousand attacks. But again, what what defines an attack? Um was it a scratch? Was it a lunge? Was uh, you it know, multiple bites. Yeah. Um, of these attacks, though, it's uh, the stat says five thousand three hundred thirty-one resulted in maiming. Um, five hundred and sixty-one were fatal dog attacks. So fatal human dog attacks. Um, Rottweilers was number two. So the list that I just read of restricted uh, dog policies that tip the Rottweiler isn't always on that list. But here you see. They actually account for number two in attacks, 666, uh, and 402 resulted in maiming. I don't know what the definition of maiming is. Uh, 110 died, people. Um, German Shepherds, number three, 229 attacks, 20 died. So what you really see is a German Shepherd, when they typically bite and they win, they're done. Uh, the the pit bull, it's the tenacity factor. Yep. It's still going. Yep. The Rottweiler has a little bit of that tenacity in it too, a little stubbornness. And that's why you see, you know, quite a few more deaths, I guess. Yeah, but if I, if I could bet money the amount of Chihuahua bites that don't get reported, they would be number one with almost zero fatalities, but they... Oh, yeah, yeah. They bite yeah, way yeah. more people. Um, I, I met with uh, someone one time in there. I, I cannot recall what the dog was, but I, I call it an ankle biter. Yep. Um, it's about a seven-pound dog, and it just it literally just kept... If it was a pit bull, it would have mauled me. If 100%. it was a German Shepherd, it would have mauled me. Um I mean, it was going to town on my ankle, ripped my sock up, and the lady says, oh, yeah, you know, he's just a nuisance. I'm like, lady, this this dog's at attacking my ankle, yep. and, and you're being no nonchalant about it. Yeah, and if you're ever that person had no business owning a dog. Go uh, go talk to any dog trainer about this. Yeah. They will tell us your walls yeah. come at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Nothing uh, wrong with the breed. <laughs> Trawls are great when they're trained, but they have a short man syndrome problem. So those are on this uh, statistic, the top three breeds. And then the other dog breeds that do on this uh, stat chart bite the most, Doberman Pinchers, American Bulldogs, Bull Mastiffs, Huskies, Presa Canarios, Akitas, and we've just been talking about them. Chihuahuas, <laughs> Lab, Labrador Retrievers, Chows, Boxers, Jack Russells. They have a tenacious streak in them, too. Oh, yeah. Um, Cocker Spaniels, Wolf Dogs. That one doesn't surprise me. They're half wild dog. Collies. Pip, uh, one of the – one dog we train, uh, trained was, oh, ridiculous uh, dog aggressive, a Collie. Oh, yeah. And we were – grooming him for a while uh but oh uh, my oh my lord yeah holy smokes i'm not gonna say his when name the hurting drive gets turned on to dogs it's, yeah. it's a lot we, we trained one where it was 
I because I use my personal dogs a lot, and I've never seen a dog stalk another dog like that. And it was a herding dog. And yes. my, my dog didn't care. He was looking at me the whole time, and I'm like, oh, I've never seen a dog stalk another dog like this. It was incredible. Speaking of herding dogs, German Shepherds were not originally bred to be guard dogs. That's why they're not called German guard dogs. They're right. German Shepherds. Because they were bred to <laughs> herd animals. Yep. Yep. Um, after Collie, pit bull type dogs is what the stat says. And Golden Retrievers made the bottom of the list. So as you can see, if you have a dog, it can bite. <laughs> dog, right. You know, when dogs get scared... If they don't, they they have fight or flight response, just like humans. Yep. If they don't have the ability to flight, they will fight. Yep. And if you have your dog on a leash, you have removed the dog's ability to flight. So that's why you see a lot of dogs aggressive uh, lunging on a leash. They, it's the only option. You you have removed the option from them escaping because you have them on the leash. The other side of it too is. Uh, if you're not an assertive enough owner, they don't trust you to deal with the to deal situation. With it. Right. So they've got to do it for you. Right. It's a trust. It's usually problem, a leadership a issue. Problem. Yeah. yeah. Quite often, it's a leadership issue, like you said. Yeah. Uh, they just not entirely confident you're going to protect them. That, that's how you see a dog where a trainer grabs a leash and it stops like a yep. light switch. Exactly. And leash back and, and they're back. To and they look like, control. what'd you do? I said, I led the dog. The dog knew I was well, leading. The, the crazy part is, I run. One of the group classes, right? And I've never trained the dog. I know it. I know and it. And you'll grab yeah. the leash within thirty seconds. It's perfect heel looking at me, and you're like, "Okay, this is this is Ridiculous. a human problem." Yeah, this, this is, is a human problem, not the dog problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, the breed is not the only factor, obviously, that directly impacts how likely a dog is to bite someone. Um, training, lack of training. Yes. Abuse, breeding, background, genetics. Yep. Is, we've trained a, a couple dogs where they even called the breeder and they're like, oh, yeah, that litter, five of them got returned to us for aggression problems. Um, it, it's like some humans need to be medicated. Some dogs have like chemical imbalances in their brain and they're not going to be people dogs or dog dogs. They, right. um, it's just not going to happen. It, it's one of the harder pills to swallow when you get a puppy. And that puppy is just not a social butterfly and just will never like dogs. Um, one of my personal dogs, she's got about four dog friends in her whole life, and she has no want or desire for any others. We train her to the point she's not trying to kill the dogs, but she just actively avoids them and has, doesn't want anything to do with any other dogs, which is fine. Right, right. You've just got to swallow that pill of maybe you don't have the go-everywhere-do-everything dog. Exactly. And I... I failed to mention this. This is super important on those deaths and attacks. That was from 1982 to 2021. <laughs> That's not per year. Holy um, crap. I thought that was per year. No, oh, no, wow. no. I, th I think America would ban dogs 100%. in general if that many people were being killed a yeah. year by dogs. So yeah, that is a, <laughs> that's a 40 year period. Yeah, that's um, wild. And yeah, so you got to take that with a grain of salt. Well, the other hard part is because it's so rare, most people have never been in that situation, so they do not understand how to handle a dog being aggressive towards them. Right. Typically what you do is you lock eyes with it and you run away, panic, or you, I don't know, you do bad things. Typically yeah. you slowly back away, do not make eye contact, do not make sudden movements. Oh, I, I would say, you know, quite often most most dog attacks – um, are human error, not dog error. Yep. You, you put your dog in a situation they were not capable of handling and you expected them to power through it. Yep. Um, if you know your dog is scared or anxious or reactive in a scenario, quit taking them there until you work through that uh, because you're asking for trouble. That's why you get training. That's why you pursue a professional training program if you don't know how to solve it. And professional but, trainers don't go, well, we're just going to throw them into the situation and see what happens. Right, no, right. we're going to proof this in so many ways before we actually commit to doing it. And then here's a blurb at the bottom of the stat. Tracking the correlation between dog bites and dog breeds was started as a way to discourage ownership of certain breeds viewed as, air quotes, dangerous dog breeds. So there was a motive behind uh, yeah. the way they put together this data as yeah. well. Um, they were trying to discourage 
those dogs from being owned. Um, it's like watching political people throw figures and stats at each other. And right. Like, Technically, you're both not wrong, but it's been tailor-made for your point of view. Yep. Frustrating. So, uh, restricted breeds in apartments, rental homes, rental properties. Uh, what's the workaround? Well, that's where we see this proliferation of emotional support animals yep. because people are trying to find a workaround that the insurance company or the property owner cannot, you know, yep. deny you the ability to own your dog. Um, again, it starts with the insurance company. The second biggest uh, problem with the industry is the media. And then, you know what? The first is the owner. Yes. Uh, in my opinion... <laughs> yeah. I was going to say the owner was third, but was, no way. It starts with, with the restrictive owner. Restrictive breeds should be more breeds that you have no can, no business owning. Like yeah. Most people cannot handle a Belgian Malinois. Correct. Um, it, it pit bulls, as long as you socialize them correctly yep. and do some bare minimum, minimum training, they're great dogs. Yeah. The, uh, it's frustrating. It, Anytime we do a puppy class, uh, I always ask people to raise their hand if they Googled the breed of their puppy before they got it. Typically about one third did. So that means two thirds have no idea what's in store for them, good or bad. Yeah. Two years from now. Um, that's not fair. Uh, you, yeah. it, it's really not fair because you pro, you have a possibility of getting the absolute polar opposite dog that you need for your lifestyle. 100%. If you do not like vocal dogs, and I saw a family that came in to, for this, <laughs> and they got a beagle, and they wanted us to train the beagle to be silent. Uh, I'm like, that is, you're, you're, that's crazy. Or huskies. I'm like, you, you yeah. have to break their personality to get them to stop. Right. And so, even then, they probably would still howl. It's and, DNA and, driven. It doesn't mean those are bad dogs. You just have to see, hey, what are their quirks? And is that a cute quirk to me? And can I live with that quirk? Or is that a deal breaker yeah, quirk? Because most Don't get the dog if it's a deal breaker. Love the screaming and howling. Right. I would never, I do own one. Mix. Yeah, I never yeah. planned on owning one because I don't like the screaming. Right. Um, it's just like you guys. You guys own your own dog training company. You got a lab. Right. The easiest breeds on the planet. Right, right. Because it was easy. Yeah, we uh, we uh, you know we have the cattle dog mix and George and then our Malinois. We thought, yeah, let's just get an easy one next time. And there's a whole bunch of because I want to get another dog at some point pretty quick. One of my dogs is getting she's nine. She's getting old and slow. But there's so many breeds I wanted to own before I started training dogs, right. and now I'm like they're they're fun to train, but I don't think I want to bring you know. And they're fun to spend time with. They but really do are. I want to hang? Do I want them in my life 24 hours a day that I'm no. home? Because there are breeds that that's you what have you got to ask change yourself. your life around. Yeah. Uh, Great Danes are one of them because they're just so big. big. It's not yeah. their fault they eat the food off the counter. It's literally at head height for them. Right. Right. Um, you've got to change your life. Or in Malinois, they have so much energy. You have to do things. You have to enter. You almost have to entertain them to right. a certain extent. Or a healer. Uh, these high drive dogs, um, in my opinion, are way more prone to more aggressive tendencies because they're bored out of their mind. Yeah, healers to me, uh, they're one of the more common dog that we deal with for yep. dog reactivity yep. because they're super DNA driven to herd something. Yep. And there's just something about them that tends to be a little bit higher on the dog reactivity scale than other dogs. Uh, as far as pit bulls, I would say they're just as often as not. Breed, yeah, yeah. To me, for reactivity, human or dog reactivity, we personally don't find we deal with more pit For your pit average bulls. pit bull. Right. The problem is we most of the pit bulls we train are rescues. So there's a whole factor Background. of – Dra right. trauma or something. I don't know what happened to this dog, let alone breeds that will die for their humans actively go out of their way right, to right. sacrifice and they get abandoned by that human. It does not do good things to their mental well-being Correct. to be in a band. And then they get abandoned multiple times. It's it's sad. not healthy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that messes with the dog's psyche for sure. Um, Nothing wrong with rescues. It's just like not researching the breed. You, That's it. You really just, don't know what you're getting sometimes just with a research rescue. research the breed and make sure that DNA-driven breed characteristic is something while you're watching TV at night, you're like, yeah, that would be a 
entertaining uh, yeah. attribute or that that's the attribute I'm looking for. And, and some of them might not necessarily be negative. Like they got a great Pyrenees because it's big, cuddly, fluffy, dependable dog. But then it sits in the middle of the room away from you and it never cuddles. Right. And you're upset about it. And I'm like, that's just the breed. Their protection guard dog type right. things. They don't want to be cuddled where they can't protect you. Typically not. They want to yep. sit where they can see all the exits and you just, people get very upset that their dog doesn't cuddle with them. Like, that's just the Great breed. example, sorry. Uh, a Shibu in you. A lot of people, oh, my dog doesn't let me cuddle. The Shibus typically, so there's always an exception to every breed yes. that we talk about, but Shibus typically are not going to be your lap dog. You know, you probably want a King Charles for yeah. one of those. Or, uh, or Chows or Akitas. They typically tend not to be the most people love driven right. breed on the planet. And have a – that's one thing you definitely want to check. How stubborn is the breed that you're looking at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you've got a whole boatload of patience, get a Bull Terrier. If you do not, do not get a Bull Terrier. They are one of the most stubborn oh, my breeds Lord, they are. I have ever seen in my life. More than mules and horses. They just will lock up and say no. Yep. You've got to really work hard to get a Bull Terrier motivated. Um, and again, there's exceptions to all of this. Like I can just – every video I've ever seen about Akitas and Shibas with aggression problems, all the comment sections full of, oh, mine's awesome. I grew up with them. Okay. Right. <laughs> you might have the exception, but generally from a dog trainer's point of view that has seen hundreds of this breed, they tend to be more a little antisocial going on. And that's fine. That's just the breed. As long as you right. know what you're getting into, it's not a big deal. Or if you know – Hey, I want to get a German Shepherd. You have to socialize it so much, way more than like a lab. Correct. To make it a normal, happy, regular dog. That is cool with anybody that comes over. Yep. Yep. Some breeds you just need to socialize more yep. uh, to compensate for those DNA characteristics in them. So once again, I'm going to wrap up with uh, breed restricted or restricted breeds or banned breeds. And as we talk about, there's really only one banned breed, and it's really just in Miami-Dade County, Florida, so reach out to those officials down there and get that over, you know, thrown out. <laughs> um, but uh, the tracking and correlation between dog bites, I'm reading this, tracking the correlation between dog bites and dog breeds was initially started as a way to discourage ownership of certain breeds. That's that. That was the that was the driver. There was a yep. there was a motive of putting these stats together, and they built the stats to reflect that motive. And when I say five hundred and sixty one fatal dog attacks by a breed, you probably dropped your jaw. And went holy hell, that's forty years. Yep, <laughs> and forty years of overrepresentation in the stats. Right. Anyway, right. So, um, yeah. They uh, always remember that. But I would say realistically, if you're getting a dog, get one that fits your lifestyle, not the pretty one or the trend. Yep. Or it just doesn't shed. Oh, yeah, it's mixed with an Aussie, though. It's got crazy energy. You know, do do some research. Figure out what would work with your lifestyle before you get a dog. Because that's a 10-year, 15-year commitment you are agreeing to. Yes, it's a lifetime commitment to your dog. Your dog's committed to you for his life, so you should be committed to your dog for their life. And hopefully uh, this was a, a good conversation for some of you that might have a dog inside of this breed or if you're considering one of these uh, restricted breeds or if you just wanted to know a little bit more about the breed restriction policies and how they became about. Um, if you have a dog that you're struggling with and needs some help, we would love to help you and your pup on your training journey. Just reach out to us. Uh, we'll talk about what your training goals are, what your issues uh, that you're dealing with, uh, and we will uh, help you have a pup that's a joy to live with. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. It's Canine Culture DFW on Instagram and Facebook. Go ahead, I had a brain cramp. And next episode, Wyatt, we are going to be talking about how to overcome behavioral or emotional challenges you are having with your dog. So if you're having any behavioral or emotional challenges with your dog, tune in next week and we'll get you some tips and pointers on how to address those, alleviate them, give you some relief. Until then, go have fun, fun with, with your dog. dog.